coming up. Holy Where's it in? This is the biggest tornado I've ever seen in my life. A huge tornado tears through a tiny town on Easter Sunday. All we could do is brace our feet up and try not to get sucked out. A tornado more than two miles wide pulverizes a tiny town. Oh my God, where's it in? As a father tries desperately to protect his children. The more they scream, the harder I push down on them. I just wrapped them up. The twister strengthens as they lose their grip on a mattress blocking the entrance of their storm shelter. All we could do was brace our feet up and try not to get sucked out. Saturday, April 11, 2020. Moss, Mississippi, a small community of about a thousand people, 40 miles north of Hattiesburg. Moss is just a little hole in the wall. Andrew Phillips and his family moved into their new home here in 2019 with the goal of buying up some old buildings and revitalizing local commerce. Back in the day, a lot of people knew where it was. They had a little town. Our goal was to bring Moss back on the map. As a volunteer firefighter, Andrew knows the importance of disaster preparedness, which is why he buys a home with a small storm shelter built into one of the kids' bedrooms. And the storm shelter is probably four foot by four foot. It's all center blocks. It has three bar in it. It's got concrete poured in the center blocks, and it's two feet in the ground. On this day before Easter, having a storm shelter sounds like a good idea, with tornado warnings all across the southeast. Some of these thunderstorms could carry with them damaging winds. We may see lines of thunderstorms with maybe some embedded tornadoes, and also the possibility of long track supercells that each one of these could carry with them that tornado risk. At the First Church of God, Pastor Paul Matt has been hearing the storm warnings. He decides to reschedule his Easter services, already a challenge in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. We knew a storm was coming and we were meeting outside because of the COVID restrictions. I was praying, you know, hold the storm off and it didn't look like it would. So we moved our Easter service to Saturday, just kind of spur of the moment decision. We really had Easter service that Saturday night and had a great time, you know, with all the fanfare of it. Easter Sunday. Jasper County Sheriff Randy Johnson wakes up to a beautiful, mild morning. Things are fine and dandy, you know, when I get up Sunday morning. We know a strong line of thunderstorms are coming, possibility of tornadoes. As the day went, we were watching the weather and saw it was getting worse and, and heading our way. 500 miles west in Dallas, Texas, storm chaser Gage Shaw has been monitoring the weather reports for the past 72 hours. For days in advance, you could see this storm system lining up in Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, all throughout the night. It was really crazy. Just 23 years old, Gage is trying to make it as a professional storm chaser, a dream since childhood. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been really intrigued by the weather. A severe storm, a mature supercell, is louder than anything you could ever hear. The tornadoes are more powerful than anything that you could ever imagine. As Gage and his chase partner prepare to head east to track these storms, they take added precautions. We were very worried about COVID-19 going into the chase. We packed 20 gallons of gas. I packed my ice chest. We had ice and drinks, and we tried to limit gas station stops as much as possible. As the storm chasers roll into Louisiana, their mission takes on new urgency. We were really nervous to stop anywhere, but we took a chance and we stopped at the Whataburger in Shreveport. And while we were there, this tornado siren started going off. The lady gave us our food and they promptly had to take shelter in the, like, the back area of the Whataburger while well, we just jumped back onto I-20 and started busting it east. All morning we were thinking, how horrible would it be if there was a massive tornado outbreak on Easter? And it looked like that was gonna happen. By late Sunday afternoon, Gage and his partner are driving into Mississippi. 
staying ahead of the storm from the southwest and approaching the town of Soso. Around 4.30, we came through Soso, and we were thinking, like, this town is in danger right now. So we get a little bit closer, we get a little bit closer. Our phones go off with the tornado warning. We know it's, it's approaching, it's getting close. Oh, there's the left side. Watch it. Come to a stop with your hazards on and watch it. So finally, we stop at this little perch. Oh, yeah. Eight miles northeast in Moss, lifelong resident Mike McCullough is relaxing at home and not watching TV as word is spreading rapidly of the tornado in Soso. Watching two long track tornadoes, we continue to get reports in. The first one has gone over Soso. Large, damaging tornado destructed. Look at the debris signature there. That's when Mike starts getting frantic phone calls from both his brother and his sons. They tell him the tornado has just hit Soso and it's headed straight for Moss. My son told me, he said, you better get out of there. And I walked outside on the carport, and I thought it was the biggest tornado that had ever been in existence. It was basically a gray wall just boiling. Mike quickly realizes a tornado that size will be impossible to outrun. It was breathing down on me. It was actually vibrating the ground, and that house was vibrating. I didn't run. I done went to the good Lord. Mike turns and heads back towards the house. I accepted it for what it was. And then I thought, I ain't going to give up. I'm not going to give up. All I could see was this dark gray, black mass, like a storm cloud moving. And I didn't know that was the tornado. Now, 10 miles south of Moss, near the town of Laurel, Gage Shaw and his partner pull over to get a better view of the storm. We couldn't see anything except gray on the horizon and black. We were looking towards our west, looking for the tornado the entire time. Then the storm chasers come to a terrifying realization. Is that it? Oh my God. The gray black mass on the horizon is a tornado that's about two miles wide. Holy Where's it in? I don't know. It was so large that it was the entire horizon. The biggest tornado I've ever seen in my life. The left edge was just south of the road, and the right edge was somewhere north of the road, and we couldn't even see the right edge. Around 5 p.m., volunteer firefighter Andrew Phillips is monitoring his fire department radio. That's when the tornado warnings take a dire tone. In his voice, I could tell it was something bad, and I stepped out on the front porch and I seen it coming. It was just like a big black cloud just coming at you. Andrew tells his wife Amber to gather their two young children and hurry into their storm shelter. I got some more pillows because I was going to cover our heads with it. And by the time I turned around, I, I heard debris hitting the house. I still was not in a panic. I got to the storm shelter. I grabbed our son's queen size mattress, put it over the door of it because the storm shelter didn't have a door. And I got down on my knees. My wife said, what is that? And I said, it's here. Watch the left edge. Is it, oh, I see it. Is it moving from left to right? We realized that the left edge is not moving, which means that the tornado is coming right at us. Oh my God. Where's it in? Oh my God, where's it in? Easter Sunday, April 12th, 2020. Storm chaser Gage Shaw and his chase partner have pulled their car over near Moss, Mississippi. Oh yeah. A gargantuan tornado with winds of 190 miles per hour is in their sights. But it appears to be so huge that it's hard to figure out where it ends. We're looking towards our southwest, and we see the left edge of the tornado. It's just straight up and down, like somebody drew it with a pencil. The storm chasers are witnessing what's known as a wedge tornado that will turn out to be the third largest on record in U.S. history. A wedge tornado is typically wider than it is tall. The sides will also have like a wedge shape to them. Sometimes they could just be straight up and down, but that would be a very violent tornado. The left edge of this tornado was straight up and down, so it was indicating that it was violent. This wedge tornado is an EF-4. 
Whenever you have an EF4, you have Hallam's completely swept off their foundations. You have complete destruction. Nothing really stands anymore. Trees snapped at the base. All the walls of your home will be gone. The shocking magnitude of the tornado causes the two storm chasers to panic. Holy Is it Oh, I see it. For it. Yeah, I go. They hurry away from the path of the twister. In the Jasper County seat of Bay Springs, Sheriff Randy Johnson knows he's helpless as the storm approaches. That's a horrible feeling when you're in law enforcement. You know people are, are hurt or they need something and you can't get to them. I had guys on the ground telling me the roads are totally blocked. You know, South Mississippi is full of tall, beautiful pine trees, large oak trees. But when you have a storm, they totally shut down the road system. 15 miles south in Moss, the huge tornado is engulfing the tiny community and blowing apart everything in its path. Resident Mike McCullough scrambles to find something to hold on to as he tries to pull himself back inside his house. I grabbed onto the door face and I hung on and it was progressively getting worse. And then the effect on my ears, both ears, felt like I had ice pick sticking at them. And about that instant, that glass door shot. The best way I can describe it was the grass and leaves and sticks. It looked like an old black powder cannon. I never experienced anything with that magnitude. I remember seeing that computer flying over the counter and hitting the dish rack, just destroying everything. The only recourse I had was to go to the good Lord. And I told him if I was due any mercy, I needed it now. With his house in danger of collapsing, Mike manages to get to the bathroom and takes cover. I was in a panic. Anybody would be staring death in the face. Just down the road, Andrew Phillips and his family are huddled in their storm shelter. I remember my wife saying, what is that? And I told her, I said, the tornado's here, hang on. It sounded like a train coming. But once it hit us and was in the storm shelter, it sounded like a big army helicopter with a double propeller just roaring over us. I'm holding the two and a half year old down and she's holding the eight month down. Their storm shelter does not have a door, so Andrew has wedged a mattress against the opening. I think it saved a bunch of the glass from the windows exploded from coming in with us. I knew the kids' ears were popping. And there was no way to keep them calm. I mean, the more they screamed, the harder I pushed down on them, trying to make sure they didn't get sucked out. Suddenly, the mattress is ripped from their storm shelter as the tornado howls inside. We didn't have much to hang on to. All we could do was brace our feet up and try not to get sucked out. On Easter Sunday, 2020, an EF4 tornado that's more than two miles wide is ripping apart tiny Moss, Mississippi. Andrew Phillips, along with his wife Amber and their two young children, are crammed inside their four square foot storm shelter. That's when the twister tears away the mattress they had propped up as a makeshift door. Halfway through the tornado, I knew the house was gone after I heard all the stuff busting. I turned around and I seen the tornado on the ground ripping up the rest of our house. And then after it was done, it was just quiet. It was eerie. <laughs> Everything you've worked so hard for is just gone. I mean, you didn't have anything hardly. Your vehicles were gone. Place of business was gone. Your home was gone. I mean, it looked like a war zone. It was devastating. You didn't know whether to go help people or whether to stay put or what to do. It was just helpless. 
And then looking back at it, the storm shelter looked like a tomb. It's all that's left of the Phillips house, but it sure served its purpose. When the storm passes, Mike McCullough emerges safely from his bathroom. He takes stock of the damage to the house that his father built. Everything was gone. Windows, doors, ports, everything gone. And the ceiling had fell in. Now I walked back to the back. I could see sky. And I could hear my neighbors and all in the distance hollering and everything. 911, where's your emergency? The tornado just came through. A tornado flattened our house. Your house was damaged by a tornado? It's destroyed. There was damage everywhere. It was an apocalyptic scene. The things that you see after a tornado like that are not things that you want to see. They're really horrific things that happen. And they're not necessarily things you want to be around. Kind of things that cause bad dreams and nightmares. There was a gentleman that was going around on his four-wheeler just trying to find cattle that had all been let out of their pens. It was pretty sad. As storm chasers in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, Gage and his chase partner are not sure how to handle the aftermath. Is the immediate threat of a tornado, does that trump the immediate threat of COVID-19? Do we dive in head first and help people or are we gonna get sick or are we gonna get them sick? We didn't really know how to handle it, but we just kind of concluded that the immediate threat of a tornado was gonna come over the virus so that we dove in and tried to help as much as we could. Sheriff Randy Johnson is stunned by the destruction all around him. I couldn't believe that. I was looking at what I saw. It totally wiped houses out, nothing left. Totally destroyed homes, chicken farms, it uprooted trees, and, and totally destroyed property. It was just in piles, and, and you know, you feel helpless. There's nothing you can do. You, you can't take their pain away. Remarkably, there are no deaths reported in Jasper County. But just across the county line, a 42-year-old mother of three, Jessica Spradley, is reported missing after her house is destroyed. I coached Jessica's son in baseball when he was a little kid. Him and my son grew up together. Within hours, Sheriff Johnson receives word that Jessica's body has been found in a nearby pond. Anytime you deal with a death in the county, it bothers you, but I know Jessica, I knew Jessica, and I know her son. Pastor Paul Matt and his family, as well as his church, are spared the horrors so many of their neighbors experience. A hundred more yards that we would have been hit. And that's one of the things of the providence of God. I, I don't try to explain it, I'm just grateful. My response is to help those who were damaged, who suffered. And that was our ministry, and still is our ministry to our community. First Church of God of Miles stepped up and was a center point for our community. They started taking in supplies, taking in donations to give the victims. They started setting up to cook for the community. Started organizing and helping the victims. I'm proud of a church that said, yeah, let's pour ourselves in this community. The tornado that hits Moss, Mississippi on Easter 2020 is part of a two-day outbreak. At least 137 tornadoes in 10 states and 36 fatalities. The Moss tornado was on the ground for an hour and 16 minutes, measured two and a quarter miles wide and carved a path 68 miles long. The damage was like nothing I'd ever seen. We came upon a house that had been completely destroyed. There was a dog just walking around the home, just looking at all the rubble with his tail tucked. It was just a really sad moment to watch him walk around his destroyed house. The community still helping each other. And if you need help, all you got to do is call one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll be back. May take them a while, but yeah, they'll be back. 
I know the way we survived. There's a storm shelter and the good Lord having his hand of protection over us. This experience is changing my life. I mean, you can't take nothing with you. All it took was two minutes for this tornado to hit us and rip us apart. So, from here on out, I live every day to the fullest. Both Andrew Phillips and Mike McCullough plan to stay in Moss and build new homes. You know, it was, it was a lot of grief and suffering that day. But when you talk to them, they'll, they'll tell you what my time it, You know, I saw it coming. I thought I was going to die. And they're here and they say, you know, just what my time. I got a reason I'm still here. And so, you know, it's always hope.